Greg, you hear it all the time, right? Like I have my financial investor, my, my financial advisor, that's like, hey, before the end of the year, look into this, look into that, right? On this call, we're going to talk specifically why, what the advantage of getting it in on January 31st versus the se- December 31st versus January 1st. There we go. Right. And then we're going to talk about overall tax saving strategies um, and why rental property investing is so good. But let's start with, let's start with the immediate benefit. Let's give it away right now for anybody that just came for that. Mm -hmm. What is the, what's the difference between buying a rental income property on December 31st, 2020 versus January 1st, 2021? For most investors, to just be very direct, for most investors who invest in a market like Jacksonville, it's going to be a tax savings of somewhere between maybe $1,000 to maybe $1,500 in your pocket to where you don't have to pay those taxes in the year 2020 or for the tax year 2020. You keep those dollars in your pocket for 2021. So if you're looking for a way, uh, a tax advantageous way to actually keep call it a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket maybe take a nice trip maybe do something nice for yourself or for your spouse or for your kids you know there is a real reason to do that and to buy a property before the end of the year do it december 31st versus january 1st it's a difference of about a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket so it's a thousand or to fifteen hundred bucks in your pocket can you kind of walk me through why that happens how it happens like what, what why is that Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go through all of the tax savings opportunities with rental properties, which is one of the reasons that I love rental property investing. It's one of the reasons that I'm not alone. Many of you who are watching love tax savings strategies through rental property investing. And it's and it's also the reason that you hear professionals out there say you got to buy rental properties. You got to buy a hard asset. You got to get the tax savings opportunities there. Um, So specifically what we're talking about here though we want to answer that that question that i know is on a lot of minds of those individuals when you invest in rental properties you're going to get the opportunity to get those incredible tax savings whenever you buy those rental properties throughout the year and if you buy it early on in the year versus the end of the year most of those tax saving strategies are going to be enjoyed by you on a prorated basis for that year, depending on when you actually close on the property. What I'm speaking about here and the real reason to buy before the end of the year is there's one write-off that you can take that happens in the year that you purchase it that you'll have to wait an entire year next year to take that write-off. And specifically what I'm talking about are the closing costs on the purchase of your rental property. So, If we're kind of running the numbers here and we're saying that, you know, typically your your purchase price for a property in Jacksonville is about $180,000. And we're saying that typically closing costs for that property is going to be somewhere around two and a half percent of that, which gets you to about $4,500 in closing costs. And then you assume that you're in a 30% tax bracket. Well, that's how I'm getting roughly to between $1,000 and $1,500. What happens when you close by December 31st of 2020, you can write off that $4,500. And if you're in the 30% tax bracket, that's going to save you about $1,350 if we're using these numbers. So what that's saying is you close in December of 2020. When it comes time to do, to pay your taxes in 2021, you now have a write-off of uh, $4,500. That's going to save you about $1,350 that you don't have to pay come April of 2021. Got it. Got it. So dollars and cents, we're talking about familiar territory here. We're talking about tax write-ups, all the benefits that come with rental property investing. As far as direct benefit of why financial advisors tell you to do it by the end of the year, it's just time value of money, right? Like you're going to, you're going to get this write off of, I guess, of 4,500 bucks. It manifests itself as a positive, uh, 
I don't know if you call it positive income, right? But like positive cash flow on your tax ledger of around $1,300 to $1,500, something like that. And it's whether or not you're going to get it in April or you're going to get it next April. So it's just money in your pocket now that you're going to get anyways if you spend a little bit of extra effort to act before the end of the year, you get it in time for, you know, whatever's going on in April. Yeah. I mean, everything that comes along with a tax saving strategy is paying less in taxes today because there's value in paying less in taxes today versus paying that same amount in taxes next year. Or if we will talk about some other strategies today where you don't have to pay for a number of years, right? At the core of it, as, as you know, m- much of our country loves 401ks and IRAs, right? And the reason that we love those things is not because we're avoiding paying taxes. It's because we recognize that there is inherent value in keeping that money in our pocket today rather than paying that tax today, right? There's value for having money in your pocket. With that money, you could invest that money and maybe make a nice sensible return on that money, which is then real money that you earn, or you could go and spend it otherwise that, you know, for whatever reason you would want to, but, you know, maybe that would take the the place of money that you didn't have to borrow, right? But either way you're looking at it, there's inherent value. The whole tax game really is how can I legally pay less in taxes today and defer those to next year? And if we're just talking about specifically why it would be in your best interest to close December 31st versus January 1st, of this year, it's because those closing costs are the only thing that you get to write off today that's not like prorated, right? You get the full write off in the tax year, whereas all of these other incredible benefits that I'm going to talk about, they're there for you no matter when you close. That's the only difference. Cool. So there's going to be an ongoing theme of this like time value of money kind of thing going on here. And to break it down in non- tax terms, right? Like as a, as a business owner, right? Like I, I've always, we're always incentivized to send out the invoice and get it in quickly, right? Like the more, the more money you have in your accounts receivables, the less you have in your bank account, the less you're able to use that money to make more money, right? So uh, as, as a real estate investor, and, and I get the sense that most of our audience that is investing with you runs this thing kind of like their own kind of side business that you manage for them, or they, kind of like Joe Dela Cruz, right? Has a legit real estate investing business and, and is thinking about it, right? So if you, if you don't think about it tax wise, think about it just cash flow wise, it's always better to have the cash under your control, have it in. That being said, if somebody's pushing you too hard to do something by the end of the year, just understand that it is it is this $1,300, $1,500. Yeah. Benefit. Wasn't it fun when you and I were talking about the setup for the show and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to share that it's about a thousand to maybe $1,500 tax savings. And it's probably going to surprise some people because the amount of push out there to get people to buy properties by the end of the year, you would think it's going to save like tens of thousands of dollars for the average investor. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. When I was investing and started starting early on, I would always hear like, wow, you know, Everybody is saying, I got to close on these properties by the end of the year, by the end of the year, by the end of the year, right? A thousand to $1,500 is amazing to keep in your pocket. And that's something that you don't get for most other asset classes. Um, But at the same time, the bigger win is all of the other tax advantages that you get no matter when you close. Like that's the bigger deal uh, here, right? This extra thousand or $1,500 you get to keep in your pocket, it's just icing on the cake. The real thing. The real thing that people need to understand, which they don't understand enough of, is what are all of those tax savings? What are all of those write-offs that I get no matter when I close? And then how can that help me defer taxes? 